We are the new Jacobin Club. And you're watching Brutally Delicious with Bruce Moore. Welcome to Brutally Delicious. I'm Ashley Page. And I'm Bruce Moore. Today we've got a great show in store for you. We've got Malik from the black metal band Malakesh. If you stay tuned, you're going to see what he's got in store for us today. Malik, thanks for joining us today, man. Thanks Appreciate a lot. it. Glad to have you. Um, ready? We'll just go ahead and get started. Sure. All right. You guys have been, uh, Epigenesis has been out for a little bit of time now, but I know you've done quite a bit of touring. But let's revisit it for a second. Um, what is your writing process like? You guys all write together? I mean, you guys are spread apart geographically, correct? Yeah, we've been spread around, like, geographically for quite some time now. So we started in Jerusalem in 93, 94, and then 98, Ashim and I went to Holland, and I went to France, but we still managed to continue the band this right. way. So the writing process, Ashim Dai is the main writer, composer, and arranger, and I co-write certain tracks, so like 20% of the album I, I, I co-write with him. And we, have, we write in different ways, which is important for us because we like, first of all, every, the album has to have a lot of variety. Right. And the way you accomplish variety is by w writing out songs in different ways, in different formats. Okay. So some will be, will start off as a jam session between Ashman and the drummer that will morph into a song. Over in Amsterdam. Right. And, that, and, and we'll keep that because we'll know that it had like a live, improvised right. feel. Others will be me and Ashton Dye jamming, and we do that a lot. Like, I would go to Holland, spend, you know, 10 days, or for the album, I would spend like a month. Right. And then go back to the US and spend another month. And that's more me and him writing tracks together. So it's like two guitarists working together. Right. And that will accomplish a certain vibe. Others will be like songs that he writes alone, that he'll demo track later on. And I think this variety adds like, you, know, you get different textures, different right. vibes, different ideas. So we vary the writing process in order to have like a variety of different tracks and different feels. When you guys are writing, are you writing with the live setting in mind? Or are you guys writing songs just for the sake of songs? Ironically, no. And so what we usually do is after everything is done, actually we record a, a demo. with a, We program the drums. Right. And we'll always leave a track or two that we'll, write, we'll finish writing in the studio. We do that on purpose. It's very stressful. but you get like a real live right. feeling to it. But we never think of the stage. For some, I mean, we do, when you write riffs, you do, but you're not thinking of the whole song, like, how would that sound live? And surprisingly, when we play them live, we're like, shit, whoa, you know, you, you, had, you discover a whole new feel to it. Right. You guys have a whole bunch of different instrumentation going on as well. Is that, is that hard to translate into the live setting? Or does that translate fairly easy? Well, one thing we do for the live setting is that we rethink the song. So we'll edit it will change certain guitar lines. I mean, minimal changes that you might not perceive. Right. <coughs> but it's important. Once you go to the album, you go in with a certain mindset. And then once you go live, you have to change that mindset. I mean, in an album, if you look at the computer, you might have 10 guitar tracks. You might not hear it, but right. there will be little details here and there. You can't later. have 10 guitar tracks live. So you'll have to go for a quicker version. So we'll think about it live, but we know that we'll have to sit together <laughs> tweak a few things to get that real, real vibe. So, yeah. Okay. Many of your songs are pretty intense and energetic. How do you, uh, how does it make you feel when the energy you perceive in the studio comes to life in front of the crowd? It's great. It's really... Like a big really, payoff? Yeah, yeah, it's a wonderful payoff. I mean, unless the crowd doesn't react and then it's no payoff at all. But, I mean, even like you will, sometimes you have a new audience, you always have people who like heard the band right. just, just recently and they'll automatically react because there's so much energy and vibe and groove into, into in the songs we write and it's a great payoff it's really really I mean if you have the good the right condition of right. course now that you've had a little bit of time to sit on it are you still uh, satisfied with the outcome is there anything you'd like to have gone back and changed like, damn I wish I would have uh, there's always that. I mean but you know if there's always something you want to change but if you do that you'll never write albums or right they come with a certain deadline, and at one point you're just gonna say, Stop. "Let it go." Yeah, or else you start, you start going nuts. Right. And you're in the studio, you start hearing things that are not there. Right. You start screaming at the engineer, and the engineer's like, "Okay, guy, you, you need to take a <laughs> take a break." break. Yeah, yeah, because, and that, and we all know that you know with time you start knowing that right. okay, I mean, we're getting those typical hallucinations that musicians get when you spend too much time in the studio. 
So at one time, just, at one point, you just have to say stop. Okay. And we did that. And we, we, of course, you could always go back and change things. And that's why I told you we changed things live. Right. Because we're like, okay, you know, if you can't change it now in the album, we can change it live. Right. So yeah, no, I'm very, very, very happy with it. And it, I think it just represents the, the it's just the, the, the point where we're at now. It represents really Malakesh after some 17, 18 right. years of work. It's exactly the kind of album we wanted to write now, so I'm very satisfied right. with it. I'm going to jump ahead then because you just sure. kind of tapped on it. You ever imagine you'd be doing this 18, 17, 18 years later? No. Not, I mean, I remember when the band started, we were just like in Jerusalem, a bunch of young, young guys wanting to start a black metal project, which was very new. Right. Uh, you know, like early 90s, grunge was taking over. So back in that time, was it what, like Venom? I mean, what'd you have going on back then? We was... had, I mean, we had some of the first like Scandinavian bands. Right. We had Bathory. I mean, for us, that was the main, main inspiration. Like, I think when Ash died, so the, the guy who founded Malakash right. and my, basically my, my, almost my blood brother, uh, when he heard Bathory the Return, it's just, Done. It just triggered something, you know, and then and the idea was to morph that with Middle Eastern drum patterns and and guitar scales. So we just had an idea, and then that idea has been evolving for 18 years. That's I didn't expect that idea would keep on morphing and changing right. for 18 years. That's the wonderful part of it. Okay. So yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised. That's, that's quite <laughs> in in this business. It's quite amazing that you know, but there's a lot of will. Time. There's a lot of will and a lot of hard work. You know, right. and so, and that's what keeps it going. Right. If you had not become a musician, what other career path would you have liked to attempt? A chef, as I'll, as I'll try to prove <laughs> <laughs> in the, the rest of the show. No. Um, well, I'm not a full-time musician. I'm, a, I'm finishing my PhD, so I will also be an academic. Part-time academic, part-time musician, part-time. I mean, the idea is just do many things. Right. Don't do one Renaissance thing. Fan. I'll yeah. Well, I feel I'm flattered. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to be full-time musician, but you know, it's just if if, if our music paid a bit more, then I would be a full-time musician. And, and you, I mean, it's hard to have a f- all the band to be like full-time. Sure. So some members can, but I talked to through a lot of these interviews. I talked to a lot of people. I mean, even Chuck Billy from Test with all these guys. You know, they all have something else going on inside. Right, and this, do this because you love it, and exactly. that if it pays off, wonderful. But if not, and you want it to pay off to a certain extent because you're like, you know, I'm not gonna like, I'm not gonna be working for 20 years so that promoters can get money and I get right. nothing. But you're doing this because you love it. At the end of the day, that's the real reason you're doing it. Right, it adds something to your life. It makes you a better human being based on whatever definition of human being you have. Right. Or better. Yeah, or better, exactly. <laughs> I guess my mom won't agree, but, you know, I would think this makes me a better human being. Right. You guys are sort of like the predecessors to some of that, though, because, I mean, there's a lot of that folk metal stuff going on now, but, I mean, you guys were doing it back in 91, 92. I hate the term folk metal. I hate it with passion. I like folk music. I just, the kind of oompa loompa folk metal that's right. going on, not my thing. Right. And not something I like to associate Malkish with. At the time when we, I remember the by the second album, Jin, people were calling it folk metal. But at the time, the, the label was vague enough that you could just throw in, you know, Bath we counted as folk right. metal. But Bath we sounds amazing. Oh yeah, Oompa Loompa, you know, sort of like happy medieval. Right, people. drinking, drink. Not my thing. Not it's just I don't I don't get it. It's fine, you know. People could do what they want, but that's not something I associate Malkish with. Right. But we are inspired by. It folk music or like traditional meditative mystical music like the category of folk is very limited if you're referring to oh, yeah. the traditional music that inspires us be it Arabic, Persian, Turkish or Indian so yeah so there's a lot of inspiration from that that we turn into metal that's the that's the important transition to make right. is guitars and drums and bass guitars are your essential ingredients you know not fiddles and other accordions or whatever right which again, you know, I'm all for artistic creativity. It's just not something that right. we do. No, no, I get you. We, like, huh. In a hundred years from now, what will the music history book say about Malakash? Well, hundred years is a stretch, but I think once we, when we talk about how will we talk about this when we're old fucks sitting there and like handicapped in a chair, barely being able to move. I'm not saying anything about headbanging. Right. What matters for us? Say like. I want people in the next let's call it, generation of musicians to say like, oh, remember that cool band, Malakish? 
but let's let's listen to this to like draw some inspiration. Just like I listen to bands now, like let's say an um, example that comes to mind, like Nocturnus. You know, like bands stop they had a couple albums, stopped playing, but people still know there was a band there that did something original that right. stood out. I wanna. That's what I want for Malcolm to say. I want. I don't want it to disappear and people forget about it. Right. It's like people will go back to it as, oh, that cool band that mixed these different traditions with with, with metal and right. And that continues to be a source of inspiration. Okay. That's all I've got. Well, take, cool. Taking time, man. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Right on.